Three years after Kong and Godzilla succeeded in defeating Mechagodzilla, they lived their own different lives. On the one hand, Kong now lives as the strongest titan in Hollow Earth, the ancient world under the surface of the Earth. Meanwhile, Godzilla lives on Earth's surface as the protector of mankind from the dangerous titan's attacks. Apart from that, Eileen, a monarch scientist, had conducted a number of presentations and interviews related to Kong and Godzilla. Here, Eileen stated that Kong was actually lonely because he never found the family he had been looking for. Furthermore, Eileen guaranteed that Kong and Godzilla would not attack each other as long as they didn't disturb each other's territory. Eileen also emphasized that people were actually lucky to have Kong and Godzilla because thanks to the strongest titan, humans were safe from the extinction because of the dangerous attack. Some time later, a monarch observation outpost stationed in the Hollow Earth repeatedly picks up an unidentified signal that they have never found so far. After that, the scene showed the life of Eileen's adopted daughter, Jia, a descendant of an ancient tribe called Aiwi. Because of her special bond with Kong, Jia had difficulty getting along with humans. Not long afterward, Jia unconsciously drew something that was exactly the same as the mysterious signal captured by the monarch observation post in Hollow Earth. Because the monarch scientists failed to understand the meaning of this mysterious signal, Eileen finally asked for help from her acquaintance, Bernie. Bernie was a podcaster who likes to link the existence of the Titan with conspiracy theories. Even though Bernie had no experience as a scientist, Eileen believed that Bernie could translate this mysterious signal because he always thinks out of the box. The next day, Kong, who had been living in Hollow Earth, suddenly appeared to the Earth's surface and moved closer to the monarch's post. Kong apparently came to show that he was experiencing a toothache due to eating the very hard bones of his prey. After injecting Kong with anesthetic, the monarch asked a man named Trapper to handle Kong's pain. With his ability as an expert in handling Titan, Trapper finally replaced Kong's infected teeth with false teeth made of solid metal, so Kong finally managed to recover from his toothache. Not long after, Aline met Trapper to discuss Trapper's prowess in dealing with Titan's health problems. In this conversation, it was implied that Aileen and Trapper were once close friends when they were still students. A few days later, Aileen finally got a report from Bernie about the mysterious signal. After conducting in-depth analysis, Bernie concluded that this was a danger signal or known as an SOS signal. This means that there was a certain party reporting danger in Hollow Earth's area. Shortly, the monarch finally allowed Aileen to form a team to investigate who sent the signal. With full consideration, Aline finally includes Gia, Trapper, and Bernie as members of her team. Using a sophisticated aircraft from the Monarch, Aline's team finally entered the special hole that had been the Hollow Earth's route of in and out. At the same time, Kong also went to Hollow Earth because he had completely recovered. When Aline and her team arrived at their destination, they found the Monarch outpost which was damaged by a Titan attack. The team was surprised to find the palm prints of a giant ape near the post, which indicates that this post was attacked by a titan ape, which is Kong's species. On the other hand, Kong immediately took his axe and began checking the security of his territory in Hollow Earth. Then, in the middle of this inspection, Kong accidentally entered a hidden area inhabited by a juvenile of his species named Suko. Not long after that, Kong was suddenly attacked by Suko and a herd of other grown ape titans. Even though Kong was outnumbered, he managed to defeat the titans who worked together with Suko. Kong finally forgave Suko and tried to befriend him so that Kong could meet with Suko's group. After that, Suko invited Kong to go to the lake, which was usually used by Suko and his group to look for drinking water. But when Kong enjoyed the water in this lake, he was suddenly attacked by a very deadly giant snake. But thanks to his ability as a predator, Kong finally succeeded in killing the snake titan and immediately made it his meal. Kong then shared the meal with Suko because he wanted to be good friends with him. Meanwhile, Eileen's team continued to explore the Hollow Earth area, looking for where the SOS signal came from. Then, in the middle of the journey, the team accidentally found a building of ancient civilization, which turned out to belong to the Aiwi tribe. Well, because Jia was a descendant of the Aiwi tribe, Eileen and her team finally took advantage of this moment to get to know the Aiwi tribe. Even though there had been friction, 
Aline's team finally managed to convince them that they had no intention of attacking the Aiwi tribe. Because of this, the Aiwi tribe finally showed their hidden residence. Here, Aline's team finally found out that the Aiwi tribe could communicate telepathically with their fellow members. Apparently, the signal that Aline's team had been investigating was actually sent by the Aiwi tribe, using a special crystal that they had. Meanwhile, Godzilla could also feel the SOS signal sent by the Aiwi tribe, because this signal could reach the minds of certain living creatures. Not long after the appearance of this signal, Godzilla, who had been sleeping soundly in the Colosseum, suddenly woke up and went to France. When he got there, Godzilla immediately destroyed the nuclear power plant and absorbed the cosmic radiation. After destroying the nuclear power plant in France, Godzilla immediately headed into the Arctic Ocean to hunt down a sea titan, Tiamat. Well, according to monarch scientists, Tiamat's lair contained enormous radiation, so if Godzilla succeeded in conquering Tiamat and absorbing all the radiation in her lair, Godzilla's radiation explosion would also be much more powerful than before. At this time, Ilene and the team were invited by the Aiwi tribe to understand the prophecy about the Hollow Earth and the world of Earth's surface. So, according to this prophecy, the Hollow Earth and life on the Earth's surface initially coexisted peacefully. However, all this was broken because there was a strong and cruel titan ape named Scar King who had the ambition to rule the Earth. Because of this prophecy, the Aiwi tribe finally sent an SOS signal to ask for help in stopping the Scar King. At the same time, Suko invited Kong to visit his group's place, which was located in a fiery area. Here, it was revealed that Suko's group was a titan tribe led by the Scar King, which was previously mentioned in the prophecy. After defeating the Scar King's group easily, Kong finally fought against the Scar King in front of many titans ape. Kong was seen using his flagship axe weapon, while the Scar King used a weapon that looked like a chain made from titan's spine. In this battle, Kong finally succeeded in defeating the Scar King. After that, the Scar King wanted revenge for his defeat, so he finally summoned an ancient ice-powered titan, Shimo, to attack Kong. At this moment, the Scar King was seen using a crystal to control Shimo as he pleases. With his icy breath, Shimo managed to attack Kong, so finally, Kong and Suko were forced to flee. In the midst of their efforts to save themselves, Kong and Suko were chased by many of the Scar King species who wanted to kill them. And when Kong was cornered by Scar King's group, Suko took advantage of this moment to drop huge rocks which ultimately fell on Scar King's men. After Kong and Suko managed to escape the attack, they rested in the Aiwi tribe's territory. Here Trapper found that Kong's right arm was badly frostbitten by Shimo's icy breath. To heal Kong's arm, Trapper finally took a special glove which had been the monarch's secret project. Once Kong wore this glove, his right arm immediately recovered completely because this glove contained the highest level of medicinal serum. Not only that, Kong could now use this glove as a weapon to strengthen his blow. Some time later, the Scar King began carrying out his mission to control the Earth's surface. By riding Shimo and being escorted by his group, the Scar King was now on his way to reach the hole that could move him from the Hollow Earth to the surface. Unfortunately, this hole was in the Aiwi tribe's territory. Knowing the Scar King's action, Kong finally rose to the surface to call Godzilla. Kong intended to invite Godzilla to work together to stop the Scar King, but Godzilla actually misunderstood and considered Kong's call as a dual challenge. Kong then had difficulty defending Godzilla's attack, because Godzilla was now growing strong and agile since absorbing all the cosmic radiation in Tiamat's lair. Moreover, the energy from Tiamat's lair also made Godzilla's radiation explosion even more destructive. The duel between Kong and Godzilla was finally stopped by the titan called Mothra, which was previously resurrected by Jia in the Aiwi tribe's area. Thanks to Mothra, Godzilla was finally willing to unite with Kong to stop the Scar King. Meanwhile, Scar King and his men have reached the territory of the Aiwi tribe and managed to find a special hole to go to the surface. While waiting for Kong and Godzilla to come, Trapper used his skills to slow down the Scar King's movement as well as his men. And a few minutes later, Kong and Godzilla finally arrived at the Aiwi tribe's territory. 
Knowing that it was an emergency situation, Kong and Godzilla immediately fought against the Scar King and his group. But this fight became very chaotic after the gravitational force disappeared due to the damage of the special crystal belonging to the Iwi tribe. It started with the gravitational disturbance. Scar King and Shimo managed to get into the hole until they finally reached the surface of the Earth. On the other hand, Kong and Godzilla also experienced the same thing, so they fought again to stop the Scar King and Shimo. The duel ravaged the city, and it was so intense because the four titans exerted their maximum strength. In the midst of this critical situation, Suko took Kong's axe and managed to destroy the crystal which controls Shimo, which has been Scar King's mainstay weapon. Suko's action made the Scar King go berserk, so he tried to kill Suko. Then, while the Scar King was focusing on Suko, Kong, and Godzilla managed to launch a combination attack, which made the Scar King overwhelmed. At the same time, Shimo, who was now free from Scar King's control, turned to attack the Scar King for revenge. Once Shimo succeeded in turning Scar King's body into ice, Kong immediately slammed the Scar King's body as hard as possible until it shattered. Thus, for the umpteenth time, Kong and Godzilla managed to save the people from the dangerous Titan attack. After this battle ended, Gia decided to continue living together with Aline, even though Gia found a lot of chemistry with the Iwi tribe. Meanwhile, Godzilla finally went back to rest in the Colosseum. Then, Kong, Suko, and Shimo returned to Hollow Earth, and there Kong finally became the new leader of the tribe. The end.